Vika Musa was born on November 4, 1934, in Canarsie, Brooklyn. Growing up in the tough streets of Brooklyn, Vic was no stranger to the harsh realities of life. By the age of 16, his path crossed with Anthony Tony Duck Corallo, a powerful captain in the Lucchese crime family. Impressed by the young kid's demeanor and potential, Corallo began assigning Vic small tasks. Whether it was cleaning cars or maintaining tables at social clubs, Vic did it all with a quiet and coachable attitude. However, beneath this calm exterior lay a ruthless streak, ready to emerge when needed. After a few years of proving his loyalty and capabilities, Corallo promoted Vic to bodyguard and chauffeur for Lucchese boss Carmine Tramunti when Vic turned 20. Amusa was not an ordinary mobster. He had a strict adherence to the Cosa Nostra rules and did not let anyone get away with breaking them. Friends and foes alike were subject to his uncompromising enforcement, always able to find a rule they may or may not have broken. Despite his rise within the Lucchese family, Vic began to feel bored. By 1960, the Lucchese family was being manipulated by the puppet master Carlo Gambino, leaving Vic without the action he craved. Seeking more gunplay, he started associating with the Profaci family, particularly the Gallo brothers. Joseph Profaci, the head of the Profaci family, demanded more money from the Gallo brothers, but Joe Gallo refused to comply. This tension led to the Gallo faction rebelling against his own boss. With about 100 members supporting their cause, including a 30-year-old Vic Amuso, the stage was set for Vic's first mafia war. Vic thrived in the chaos. He found the action he desired, carrying multiple guns and a cold-blooded attitude that allowed him to kill without hesitation. Members of the Profaci faction started disappearing, some found in the trunks of cars, others vanishing without a trace. Vic was in his element, and his reputation for ruthlessness grew. In 1965, Vic's violent streak caught up with him. Charged with racketeering, he was sent to prison, marking a significant downturn in his criminal career. Despite his meticulous enforcement of Cosa Nostra rules and his cold efficiency in carrying out orders, the law finally caught up with him. Vic Amuso's criminal career took another dramatic turn in 1971 when Joe Gallo was released from prison. Upon hitting the streets, Gallo immediately reignited the war by killing two Profaci captains. This move once again plunged the New York Mafia into turmoil. The family went through a transition, Profaci was gone and there was a new young boss running the family. Joe Colombo was flamboyant but had no problem going to war with anyone. At the same time, Joe Colombo was infuriating Carlo Gambino with his Italian-American Civil Rights League. Colombo, who had been handpicked by Gambino to run the old Profaci family, was now a liability, making Gambino look bad in front of the other bosses. Gambino needed to eliminate the problem he had created, but he needed to do it strategically. Gambino attempted a secret meeting with Joe Gallo, hoping to find a resolution. However, it became clear that Gallo was intent on continuing the war. Seizing the opportunity, Gambino hired a random black assassin to kill Joe Colombo, framing Gallo for the hit. This move effectively put a target on Joe Gallo's back, even though Vic Amuso disagreed with the Colombo shooting and began considering a return to the Lucchese family. With Colombo eliminated, Gallo became the primary target. On April 7, 1972, Joe Gallo was shot to death in Little Italy, New York. The Gallo crew disbanded shortly after, with members defecting to the Lucchese or Bonanno families. Vic Amuso, now a seasoned mobster with a reputation for ruthlessness, decided to join the Lucchese family's 19th whole crew, led by Christopher Christy Tick Fernari. At 38 years old, Vic Amuso found a new home within the Lucchese family. The administration, well aware of his past crimes, respected him immensely. It was here that he met his new ally, Anthony Casso. Together, they became a formidable duo. Amuso soon got involved in a lucrative racket selling paroles to inmates. For $20,000, he could secure an inmate's release from prison. This scam earned him around $250,000 a year. However, on December 21, 1972, Vic Amuso's luck ran out. He was arrested for his involvement in the scam and sent to prison. In 1976, at the age of 43, Vic Amuso was released from prison. His loyalty to the Lucchese family during his incarceration was rewarded with official membership into the family. Now a made man, Amuso's mind was teeming with ideas to generate revenue for the family. He delved into the drug business, which, unlike other mafia families, the Lucchese family embraced. The Lucchese's were making millions each month by distributing heroin across New York and New Jersey. On May 30, 1977, Vic Amuso and Anthony Gaspipe Casso were arrested for their involvement in a drug trafficking ring that smuggled heroin from Bangkok, Thailand. Despite this setback, Amuso's stature within the Lucchese family continued to grow. In 1980, Tony Duck Corallo promoted Christopher Christy Tick Fernari to consigliere and Vic Amuso was promoted to captain, solidifying his position within the family's hierarchy. 
the mid-1980s proved to be the best period for the government. On February 15, 1985, Corallo Fernari and underboss Salvatore Santoro were indicted in the Mafia Commission trial, a landmark case aimed at dismantling the Mafia's national ruling body. The Lucchese family was thrown into disarray as its top leaders faced severe legal repercussions. Meanwhile, within the Gambino family, tensions were reaching a boiling point. On December 16, 1985, John Gotti and his crew orchestrated the murder of Gambino boss Paul Castellano, plunging the family into a civil war. This power vacuum and the subsequent upheaval within the Gambino family had significant repercussions for all the five families, including the Lucchese's. With the top leadership of the Lucchese family facing incarceration, Vicca Musso saw an opportunity. His loyalty, combined with his ruthless efficiency and strategic thinking, positioned him as a key player in the family's future. Alongside his ally Anthony Casso, Amuso prepared to steer the family into the next generation. In January 1986, Tony Dux Corallo named Anthony Buddy Luongo, the new acting boss of the Lucchese family. Vic Amuso was unhappy with this decision but had larger issues to contend with. John Gotti's unauthorized murder of Paul Castellano had sent shockwaves through the Mafia, violating the traditional rules. Determined to make Gotti pay for breaking Cosa Nostra rules, Vic Amuso, with the help of Genovese boss Vincent Gigante, orchestrated multiple attempts on Gotti's life. However, these attempts were unsuccessful. The Gambino family was getting ready to spill blood, with the Paul Castellano faction discontented and Frank De Chico trying to maintain peace to prevent a civil war. On April 13, 1986, Frank De Chico was visiting Gambino captain Daniel Marino. Unbeknownst to him, Vic Amuso and Anthony Casso were outside the social club planning a bomb on what they believed was John Gotti's car. When De Chico entered the vehicle, it exploded into a fireball killing him instantly. This act of violence, intended for Gotti but resulting in the death of the Gambino underboss, signaled the beginning of a war. Vic Amuso's willingness to take out such a high-ranking member demonstrated his ruthlessness and desire to challenge Gotti. Vic Amuso also faced internal challenges within the Lucchese family. Tony Corallo had chosen Anthony Buddy Luongo as acting boss, grooming him to take over when Corallo went to prison. However, Vic Amuso had other plans. As Luongo's driver, Amuso found it easy to make his rival disappear, sending a clear message to Corallo and the rest of the family about his dominance. This move showcased Amuso's ruthlessness, proving that he was more than capable of eliminating threats both within and outside the family. By making Luongo disappear and killing a Gambino underboss in one year, Amuso demonstrated his killer nature. With Vincent Gigante backing his every move, Vic Amuso solidified his power. On January 13, 1987, Tony Corallo was sentenced to life in prison, paving the way for Amuso's appointment as the new official boss of the Lucchese family. In 1988, Vic Amuso solidified his power by appointing his best friend, Anthony Casso, as the underboss of the Lucchese family. This was an unusual move, as both Amuso and Casso were known as shooters, individuals more inclined towards violent enforcement rather than the business side of mafia operations. Traditionally, mafia families balanced their leadership between shooters and hustlers to ensure a well-rounded approach. However, the Lucchese family under Amuso and Casso became a formidable war machine, focusing heavily on violence. Not everyone was pleased with this new arrangement. With both the boss and underboss always in agreement, the role of the consigliere, the family advisor, seemed redundant. The consigliere's job was to ensure the organization benefited from both worlds, a balance now missing under Amuso and Casso's leadership. One of Vic's first significant issues was with the Lucchese crew in New Jersey, led by Captain Anthony Accetturo. Accetturo wasn't sending enough money to the administration, leading to his demotion back to soldier status. Needing a new captain for the New Jersey crew, Vic ordered everyone to his Brooklyn social club to identify the toughest and most loyal candidate. However, the New Jersey crew, fearing they would be killed, never entered the building. Furious, Vic placed a hit on the entire crew, leading to weekly murders of New Jersey mobsters in the streets. Vic Amuso's reign of terror was unprecedented. He had John Gotti's crew worried that their cars would be blown up, and he dealt with rivals by kidnapping and making them disappear. This created a climate of fear and demonstrated Amuso's ruthless control over the Lucchese family. Despite his initial fury, Vic eventually appointed his rival, Michael Tachetta, as the new boss of New Jersey, seeing no other viable option. This decision highlighted Amuso's willingness to take pragmatic steps when necessary, even if it meant working with someone he didn't entirely trust. In 1989, rumors began circulating that one of Amuso's powerful captains, Paul Vario, had a snitch in his crew. Lucchese associate Thomas Red Gilmore was suspected of talking to the police. With Vario sick and unable to deal with Gilmore himself, Amuso tasked Louis Didone and Patty Delarusso with handling the situation. On February 5, 1989, Delarusso, 
along with Didone and another associate, shot and killed Thomas Red Gilmore, eliminating the potential threat. On May 30, 1990, Vic Amuso and Anthony Casso were both indicted on racketeering charges. However, due to the corrupt cops on Amuso's payroll, they received a warning about the impending indictments, allowing them to go into hiding. Despite being fugitives, Amuso continued to run the Lucchese family from a secret location. His notoriety even earned him a feature on the television program America's Most Wanted, which aired an episode about his life of crime. From his hideout, Amuso appointed Alphonse Little Al Darko as the acting boss of the Lucchese family. Shortly after, rumors began to circulate about Lucchese Captain Peter Fat Pete Chiodo potentially becoming a government informant. Known for his zero tolerance towards informants, Amuso immediately ordered a hit on Chiodo, assigning the task to Little Al. This was an opportunity for Darko to prove his capability in handling real business. On May 8, 1991, three gunmen shot Chiodo 12 times, but miraculously, he survived. Following this attempt on his life, Chiodo decided to cooperate with the government, becoming a key informant and agreeing to testify against several major figures of the five families, including Amuso. Vic Amuso was furious that Chiodo had survived and turned informant. Blaming Darko for the botched hit, Amuso directed his wrath towards him. To undermine Darko's authority and express his dissatisfaction, Amuso effectively demoted him by appointing a four-man panel to run the family in his absence. This panel included senior figures like Salvatore Avellino, Frank Big Frank Lastarino, and Steven Stevie Crea, creating a shared leadership to stabilize the family. Despite his efforts to maintain control from hiding, Amuso's days as a free man were numbered. The increasing pressure from law enforcement and the betrayal of former allies like Chiodo took a toll on his operations. Eventually, Vic Amuso was captured in 1991, marking the end of his reign. His capture was a significant blow to the Lucchese family, leading to further indictments and convictions of its members. Shortly after the Chiodo incident, Darko was set up to be killed at a family meeting. Realizing the imminent danger, he fled for his life and turned state's evidence. His testimony, combined with that of Chiodo and other informants, was devastating to Amuso's case. In a separate racketeering trial, Vic Amuso was convicted on all 54 charges on June 15, 1991, including nine murders. On October 9, 1992, he was sentenced to life imprisonment. Anthony Casso managed to remain free for two more years until his apprehension in 1993. During this time, Amuso grew increasingly suspicious that Casso had tipped off the FBI to seize control of the Lucchese family for himself. In late 1993, Amuso removed Casso as underboss and declared him a pariah, effectively banishing his longtime ally from the family. Casso, in response, became an informer. The incarceration of both Amuso and Casso revealed their extensive use of corrupt NYPD officers Louis Apolito and Stephen Caracapa as personal hitmen allegedly ordering more than 10-12 killings while fugitives and during their trials. Amuso promoted Joseph Little Joe Defee to acting boss with the support of ruling panel members Stephen Wonderboy Crea, Anthony Boat Barada, Salvatore Sal Avellino, and conciliere Frank Big Frank Lastarino in 1991. Taking advantage of Amuso and Casso's indictments, Lastarino aligned himself with powerful Brooklyn faction leaders, including George Georgi Neck Zapola, Frank Bones Papini, Frank Gioia Jr., and George Conti, consolidating power within the family. By early 1992, Vic Amuso feared the rise of rival factions within the Lucchese family, particularly the old Bronx faction. Determined to assert his authority, Amuso orchestrated an attack on Agnello Neil Migliore, one of the family's most powerful capos. On April 3, 1992, during a birthday celebration at a restaurant in Westbury, New York, a gunman fired shotgun blast through the window hitting Migliore in the head and chest. Despite his severe wounds, Migliore survived the assassination attempt. Vic Amuso's reign over the Lucchese family was marked by respect and honor. His leadership saw the family transformed into a fearsome war machine, but his eventual downfall highlighted the precarious nature of a life steeped in organized crime. The extensive cooperation of former allies turned informants and the revelations of corruption within law enforcement underscored the lengths to which Amuso went to maintain his grip on power. In 1992, amid the chaotic underworld of organized crime, Vic Amuso attempted to eliminate Agnello Neil Migliore, a powerful captain from the Bronx faction. In a strategic move to maintain control and keep the Bronx faction in line, Amuso appointed Stephen Wonderboy Crea as the new underboss of the Lucchese crime family. This decision, however, nearly sparked a civil war within the family. Crea, alongside Joseph Little Joe Defeed, shifted the family's power center back to the Bronx a move that displeased Amuso and his Brooklyn faction supporters. Frank Big Frank Lastarino, the family's consigliere, saw an opportunity in the growing tensions. He organized a plot to murder Crea with the help of Captains George Zapola, 
Frank Papagni, and Frank Gioia Jr., hoping to seize control of the family. During the mid-1990s, many leaders from the Brooklyn faction, rivals of Amuso, were imprisoned on various charges. To stabilize the family, Amuso promoted his loyal Brooklyn capo, Louis Louis Bagels Didone to Consigliere, replacing Lasterino. Defeed remained the acting boss, managing lucrative operations in the garment district that generated between $40,000 to $60,000 a month. Amuso kept Crea as the underboss, overseeing construction and union racketeering, which brought in substantial profits, between $300,000 to $500,000 a month. On April 28, 1998, Defeed was indicted on nine counts of racketeering related to the garment district operations from 1992 to 1997. The Lucchese family had been profiting significantly from these rackets since the mid-1980s. In December 1998, Defeed pleaded guilty and was sentenced to five years in prison. Amuso, angered by Defeed's guilty plea, began to doubt his loyalty and suspected him of skimming profits. After Defeed's imprisonment in 1998, Amuso appointed Stephen Wonderboy Crea as the new acting boss. Crea's loyalty to Amuso was evident as he increased the amount of family profits sent to the imprisoned boss, convincing Amuso that Defeed had indeed been skimming. As a result, Amuso issued a contract on Defeed's life in late 1999. On September 6, 2000, Crea and seven other Lucchese members were arrested and charged with extortion. Crea was eventually convicted in 2001 and sentenced to five years in prison. He was released in 2006, marking another crazy chapter in the Lucchese crime family's history. Following the imprisonment of Stephen Cray in 2001, influential consigliere Louis Louis Bagels Didone was promoted to acting boss of the Lucchese crime family. Didone, known for his strategic thinking, took over the day-to-day -day operations of the family. One of his primary tasks was to oversee the contract ordered by Vic Amuso on the former acting boss Joseph Little Joe Defeed. Defeed, unaware of the contract, became suspicious when he was demoted from captain to soldier during his imprisonment. Upon his release on February 5, 2002, Defede turned informant, joining Alphonse Little Al Darko in providing the U.S. government with crucial information on various criminal activities including gambling, loan sharking, extortion, and old murders. This led to the indictments of Mafia cops Louis Ippolito and Stephen Caracapa, who had been taking bribes from former Lucchese underboss Anthony Gaspipe Casso since the 1980s. Ippolito and Caracapa had provided valuable information about ongoing investigations and had facilitated the murders of rivals and informants. In 2003, Didone received a life sentence, prompting Amuso to establish a ruling panel to oversee the family's activities. This panel included senior capos Agnello Neil Mitzliore, Matthew Matt Madonna, and Joseph Joey D. DiNapoli. These influential captains were tasked with maintaining the family's operations. After Stephen Wonderboy Crea's release from prison in 2006, the ruling panel continued to manage the family's day-to-day -day activities. However, in late 2009, panel members Madonna and DiNapoli were indicted on labor racketeering, illegal gambling, and extortion charges. In 2009, Stephen Cree resumed the role of acting boss. The family's structure remained complex and adaptive, with the ruling panel continuing to play a significant role in governance. In May 2019, a government witness disclosed the current leadership of the Lucase family. Imprisoned boss Vic Amuso sent a letter to underboss Stephen Crea, naming Brooklyn-based mobster Michael Big Mike DeSantis as the new acting boss, replacing Bronx-based Matthew Madonna. The witness revealed that the Lucchese family operated with seven crews. Patty Red Della Russo was named the new acting underboss, and Andrew D. Simone, the new consigliere. As of 2024, Vic Amuso is still the official boss. Big Mike DeSantis is the official street boss. Rumor has it that Big Mike has been meeting with George Georgie Neck Zappala to make him an official boss. The current underboss is Frank Bones Papagni and Anthony Boat Barada as consigliere.